Hello guys, crime and punishment are central to Russian culture. And no, I am not speaking about the famous Russian novel by Fyodor Dostoevsky with the very same title, Crime and Punishment. I don't like Russian literature that much. I am speaking about the general attitudes inside Russian population. First, Russians commit crimes, then Russians get punishment. And I'm glad to see that with each day more and more Russian war criminals get their deserved punishment. Recently, a group of Wagner soldiers responsible for the death of thousands of innocent Ukrainians was caught deep inside Africa in Sudan and punished by Ukrainian special forces. There are similar special punishment operations deep inside Russian Federation and on temporarily occupied territories. And this is very important because we know unpunished evil grows and we don't want that. Actually, we cannot afford that anymore. That's why I'm happy to tell you more about this very important but still quite invisible Ukrainian frontline. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda and fake news. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. So before the recording of this video, I decided to rewatch a video released by Kyiv Post where we can see a group of Ukrainian special forces in Sudan interrogating some of Russian Wagner soldiers. Some of them were neutralized before, we can see it on the video, in the result of special punishment operation. Well, question number one, what were Russian soldiers doing in Sudan? Traditionally spread crimes and violence. And by neutralizing them, Ukrainians not only help themselves, but the world. Since the start of invasion, Russia has collected $2.5 billion from Africa, selling their jewels. This is also a crime and also a way that Russia uses to blackmail the world, pretending that they control the continent. These are free countries and free people, but of course, such private armies cause a lot of chaos inside. Honestly, I believe some of you have already forgotten about the Wagner Group. I will remind you, this is a private army organized in Russia decades ago. And uh, since then, they participated in many illegal raids uh, that are important for Kremlin in Syria, in Sudan, in Southern African Republic, in Mali and in Ukraine. Wagner Group was associated with Prihozhin, a leader, a criminal, a monster, and he was killed not long ago by Putin after his march and uh, negative comments concerning Russian army and special military operation in Ukraine. Wagner Group was one of the strongest, unfortunately, but they also lost. Remember to subscribe to see more Russian monsters defeated and to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukraine. So after this uh, death of Prihozhin in an air crash, and like everyone in the world knew he would die soon after his open critique of Putin, and this actually happened. And sometimes it terrifies me how indifferent the world is. You literally know a person will be killed, a person is killed, and still many address Putin as a politician, not as a criminal or the main murderer on this planet. But Wagner Group is evil. They continue their missions, uh, spoiling life in African countries, in Syria, from time to time visiting Belarus. I don't know what will happen to them. Maybe they will be reshaped, but at the moment they are not favorite in Russia. Also, there are are the examples of such punishment operations inside Russia. It's not always easy, but it's extremely important and it is a message to Russians. Don't you enter Russian army, be it private or state. Russian armies are deadly to their members. And another person was neutralized. This is a criminal, a war criminal a pilot of a bomber jet to 95 
who bombed lots of Ukrainian cities and Syrian cities and uh, thought he can return back to normal life, normal orc life in Saratov region in Russia, but he was shot in his car. Karma reached him. And once again, this is a message that even if you manage to escape the front lines, your punishment will find you and Ukrainian special forces will find you. Similar destiny awaits uh, the so-called leaders of uh, the so-called uh, republics on the temporarily occupied territories and many uh, people who came there and pretend that they are representatives of the city councils, of the Republican uh, authoritative stuff, uh, they are also neutralized. And some traitors, of course, because during any war there can be some traitors, and I can name you like 10 or something that I know and that were already neutralized. And once again, this is not just good for the success of Ukrainian counteroffensive, for the security, but it is also an important message that all the war criminals will be identified and will be punished with all the modern technologies, with all the video cameras, with people recording the crimes on telephones. We are able to identify them, not just groups or cars, but I mean persons. And they have to wait for that punishment because that's the way it is. The history of the Second World War illustrates us that all war criminals, main war criminals, must be punished. But it is not just Putin. I know it might be painful to those of you who believe in humanity, but it is not only Putin or Lavrov or Shoigu or Dead Prigozhin who are responsible for war in Ukraine. Millions of Russians support them. And as one of my subscribers quoted Churchill, I will repeat, if the country is run by a dictator, it is not only a dictator to blame. So special forces of Ukraine will have a lot of work chasing, identifying and neutralizing this war criminals. But this is an important mission. And maybe in future we will see a couple of Bond films where Bond will be Ukrainian. And a girl. Oh, that can be me. <laughs> Thank you once again for your support. Thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons and helping more to film, to think. I'm really glad to have you in my life. I'm grateful. Uh, remember to subscribe to my Instagram. Let's make a community of 10,000 there. This is my small dream. Also join my Twitter, join my threads and my Discord community. Let me know, would you like to have a live stream this Saturday because I feel I've missed you and there are lots of things that we can discuss. For example, the dissolution of Russia, one of my favorite topics. Um, also, check our new St. Valentine's collection in a merch shop. These t-shirts and sweatshirts, they work well as reminders about Ukraine and as a demonstration of your love to our country. My country, your country, democratic values and good people around the world. But most importantly, thank you for your continued support. Slava Ukraini!